Can you hear me now? Okay. Great. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I'm executive director with Environmental Health Trust, and Dr. Deborah Davis founded and is president of Environmental Health Trust. We are a scientific think tank. We educate policymakers, create public awareness programs on environmental health issues where prevention works. And our focus right now is on cell phone radiation, which includes wireless, Wi-Fi, and I'm going to talk about 5G. I'm going to be covering a lot of issues tonight. There's also going to be a panel later where I'll be talking with Katie Singer and a, another uh, doctor on this issue. So um, this is a huge issue. Our, our website is Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org. Please go there for references and, and more information. Um, and this is our website, Environmental Health Trust. So Dr. Deborah Lee Davis wrote The Secret History of the War on Cancer, which is an incredible read about how leading scientists knew in the 1930s that radiation and chemicals and pesticides were harmful to our health. But because of, a because of money and industry, power, and things that happened in World War II, a lot of that got buried. And um, we're focusing on treatment rather than prevention, which is the cure. Her book, Disconnect, takes the last chapter of the secret history of the war on cancer a step further because the, her last chapter is on cell phone radiation. Disconnect goes into the stories of scientists who have done research on cell phone radiation, found effects, and then been uh, attacked having fraud, or studies, lines were changed out of papers last minute, and a whole series of incredible and important history that people need to understand. Because when I first talk about cell phones, wireless, or uh, this new technology, Wi-Fi technology, people say, but I never heard that there was a problem with that. Why isn't our government doing anything? Or what's going on? I thought the science showed that it was fine. And that is this book. Um, I regularly reread it because there's always just it's still so relevant, the stories of these researchers. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of them. So this is what we see. We love our phones. Um, advertisers and companies support us in, in loving this technology. And as a social worker, I saw firsthand changes in my clients when cell phones were introduced. And now when I look at the research, I am overwhelmed by the uh, symptoms of addiction, um, bullying, uh, increased depression, feelings of I'm not good enough because my social media image is not good enough. All of this is happening. And had I time, I would be working on that. But I decided to work on the radiation aspect because I feel, felt that it just needed to get so much more light. Um, this is, oh, see if it's working. Whoop, wait a minute, let me go back. Okay. This is um, some work that was done by uh, our advisors, engineers in Brazil, on the imaging of cell phone radiation into the brain of a child. And if you look at the colors, the lightest color, the yellow and orange, are the highest rate of intensity of absorption into the tissue. Then it goes into red then purple, then blue. All of these are online for you to see. There's also published papers where you can see um, imaging, which I'm going to talk about as well. And what's so important about research that looks at the absorption into our tissue of this radiation are two things. One is that most people aren't even aware that the radiation is absorbed into their bodies. But also, when limits were set, uh, 20 years ago, based on 30-year-old science, they didn't consider the different tissues in our bodies. Um, everything from your, your skull, your, your hippocampus, all your glands, what, 
How does the radiation penetrate into each? What could be the implications in terms of the developmental age of, of the person who has the phone to their head? So all of these questions were not answered when limits were set 20 years ago. In fact, the EPA was defunded from setting proper safety standards on cell phone radiation. The same year that the uh, FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, adopted limits about how much radiation a phone can emit and how much radiation a cell tower can put into the vicinity of, a, of an area, based on groups that were filled with military and industry. And there were not um, public health folks or uh, physicians, and nor was there even data on the implications for children. And they were not pre-market safety tested. They still are not pre-market -pre safety tested. Not cell phones, not our wireless devices. There also is no post-market surveillance, which is incredibly important. Just with a drug, there's post-market surveillance. You report side effects that you have. You get drugs, and you get a long sheet of, of side effects that have been reported. But that doesn't happen with cell phones, wireless, cell towers. In 2015, the EMF scientist appeal to the United Nations was issued. It's now been signed by over 240 scientists from 42 nations. They're independent scientists who have published in the peer-reviewed literature. And this is a great summary of the situation. Numerous recent scientific publications have shown that electromagnetic fields affect living organisms at levels well below international and national guidelines, meaning the limits that governments have set. Research has shown effects at levels that are lower. These effects include uh, cancer risk, cellular risk, increase in harmful free radicals, genetic damage, structural and functional changes of the reproductive system. There's uh, sperm damage, decreased sperm, learning and memory deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being. And you can go online, both to our website and to the EMF Scientist website, to, to read that. So what are we talking about? Um, electromagnetic radiation is on a spectrum, because these are energized waves, and they oscillate, meaning they go up and down, and they move, and our body absorbs them. So cell phones and wireless are radio frequency, which are microwaves. They are the same frequency, meaning the same oscillation, as a microwave oven. They're actually very different than a microwave oven, but it's the same frequency. And we're about to introduce a new technology, 5G, of which some of the carriers, not all, are going to be utilizing uh, frequencies which are even higher, sub-millimeter and millimeter waves that have never been commercially used. The public has never been exposed to widespread exposure to, to millimeter waves, nor have bees, nor have birds, nor have trees. Um, and how we test cell phones, actually, let me back up and say this. Microwaves heat food, which would be a problem if our brains were heated, if our bodies were heated to where we were cooked. So limits are set so that we're not cooked. It's called the thermal, thermal heating is what the, um, the groups who, who developed these standards we're concerned about was thermal heating, heating only. Not any of the biological changes that might happen when you have these energized waves being absorbed into your body. And what this is an image of is the way we, we um, test cell phones, a, a specific absorption rate test, which is antiquated, outdated, irrelevant, but it is how we do it. We have a big plastic head representative of a very large 220 pound man filled with a sugar salt liquid, and there's a thermometer in it that goes around to see what the temperature is in the head. It's not based on children's 
uh, heads. And just to give you an example of how outdated our limits are, you can see the arrow for where, when limits were set, how much science there has been since then. This is the number of publications on electromagnetic fields in NIH's PubMed database. Our country, the United States, has among the highest allowable limits for cell tower radiation in the world, actually. And you can see the limits of other countries, which are um, uh, Russia, Italy and China, Poland, uh, India, are much lower than ours. They are still not safe in those countries, but they are much lower because of research that was done, especially out of Russia, during the Cold War, where they found the biological effects and impacts, neuropsycho effects, that they, um, the scientists there were recognized as being an issue. Now, Dr. Davis talks about this in the book, Disconnect and the Secret History of the War on Cancer. But I want to frame this discussion with uh, the war gaming of the science. In 1994, after two uh, scientists found DNA damage from radiofrequency radiation. There was a memo that surfaced. It was brought to light by Microwave News. You can go online and read all about the history of this issue at Microwave News site. And what they said was, I think that we have sufficiently war-gamed the lie Singh, that's the names of the researchers, issue. And this really speaks to uh, the public relations effort, the multi-million dollar public relations effort, which has created a situation where when I talk to people, they say, I don't think that's really a problem. I, if I, I would have heard about that if, if that were a problem. Everything from attacking researchers, um, which happened with, with Dr. Henry Lai about was his grant using the money correctly um, in disconnect, uh, she tells the story of Adelkoffer and his research. Um, there are many, many sad stories, actually, of, of scientists who performed, researches, performed research, found problems, and were attacked, or there were replication studies, which weren't really replication studies, that were done very soon after, and they got a lot of public relations, and then it discredited their work. 